convoy. Ow! Am I gonna die? Thank goodness. How does such a program work? Well, with a bit of practice, humans can learn to identify snake species at a glance. What if we were to make a mathematical model that could also learn from experience? Such a model would involve mathematically transforming the inputted data and calling the class corresponding to the highest resulting probability the prediction, which at first would just be a random guess. Then, based on the accuracy of its predictions, the mathematical model can repeatedly self-adjust to find the correct answers, a lot like in the game Hot and Cold, where you repeatedly use information about how close you are to find the hidden object. This model is called a neural network. Let's look at a simple neural network that predicts whether a snake is venomous or not based on the degree of presence of certain features, which will have been identified by a special neural network from an inputted image, but more on that later. The mathematical transformation that takes place involves multiplication between the inputs and adjustable numbers called weights and the summation of the resulting values. Say that a 1 in the output represents a predicted venomous snake and a 0 represents a predicted non-venomous snake. Because snakes with these features are usually venomous, these weights should end up positive to add to the sum, and because snakes with these features are usually non-venomous, these weights should end up negative to take away from the sum. Think of weights as determining how important factors are and in which way. While we manually assigned the weights, they would actually be set to random values and would gradually be adjusted by the neural network to make its predictions closer to the correct values. This process, called training, is carried out with the help of derivatives which tell the neural network how the weights should be adjusted. By performing more of these operations, neural networks can find incredibly complex relationships. To identify and deal with features in images effectively, we can use convolutional neural networks. First, an image, which really just consists of a bunch of numbers that represent how intense a particular pixel is, is inputted. Then, sections of numbers in the inputted image are repeatedly multiplied by grids of self-adjusting weights called filters, and each time the result is summed. When corresponding numbers match up, the resulting value is large, representing the presence of a feature. There are many of these filters to look for many features. The specific features that the convolutional neural network looks for are determined by adjusting the filters during training. Finally, the relationship between features and the different possible classes is established later in the network, a lot like in the example from earlier. Applications for convolutional neural networks are endless. We can easily identify snake species, have self-driving cars, and even predict the traits of organisms based on their genetic code. Thanks for watching. And remember that making mistakes is part of learning.